Just thought I'd let you know that I think I'm going to be going to buy myself a new 30 out six. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I was doing the video and it was, it's awesome. I thought, and I don't have any. I thought you were going to do one why you don't have that one because it was normal. No, I was going to do the video on why I don't have a 30 out six. <laughs> and then the more I look at the numbers, the more I think maybe they were right all along. <laughs> and I need one. Okay. It's simple. It's math. Make you a deal. You go buy yourself a nice new outfit. I just, I'll just be back in a little bit. Might have something, might not. So deal? All right. You guys, there is not a single 30-06 cartridge anywhere to be found here. I couldn't believe it the other day when I was looking through, I was looking for a 30-06 to use as an example, and I had to check every single gun to make sure I wasn't forgetting something. I actually don't own a 30 out 6. Now, I don't have any kind of vendetta against the 30 out 6, but there are, in my opinion at least, four pretty valid reasons why the 30 out 6 may be hasn't been the right pick for me on a lot of these. And so, first, credit where credit's due, what the 30 out 6 is, and really what it's accomplished. And then I want to get into those four specific reasons why I just haven't picked one every time I had one up against another. First, the 30-06, you know, was created in 1906, hence the name, 30 being the caliber and 06 being the year. The 30-06 is 117 years old, and it's still a very, very popular cartridge used for hunting and other things. You know, in its first 50 years of use, it was standard issue in militaries around the world, but especially around in the United States. It went through a lot of changes in that period. I mean, when the 30 out 6 was first released, it was shooting a 150 grain bullet at 2700. And now, you know, we can shoot that quite a lot faster for a 150 grain bullet with improvements in powders and other things. Plus, the bullets that we use are have advanced a lot. We aren't just shooting just hunks of lead anymore. There's a lot of engineering going into, into bullets. And so it was successful back then, and it's even more successful now with what has been added to the cartridge. It has a 17 and a half degree shoulder on it, which makes it really smooth for feeding. Though by today's standards, we're generally going to those sharper shoulders, just get a little bit more powder in the same platform. All right, but let's get into it. Reason number one is the bullet drop. The bullet drop is highlighted. So all of this, we're gonna talk about two cartridges that we're gonna compare 30 out six to. I'll show a few others just for reference. But two cartridges that always stop me, and I always pick up one of these two instead of the 30 out six. Can you guess what those two cartridges are that I might, that would always stop me from the 30 out six? The first you might guess, it's the seven mag. The seven mag is uh, shooting a little bit faster. It has a little, using a little bit more powder. And the second is the 280 Ackley Improved. Now, most people don't compare those, the 280 Ackley Improved and the 30 out six. But if you look at the ballistics, it's actually, I think, a really compelling comparison between them for a few reasons. One is they have just very, very similar recoil. But here, let's talk about the drops, okay? Same bullet weights and velocities were real similar, but because it's a seven millimeter bullet, those seven millimeters just have higher BCs all else equal. And so look at the drop, 400, 600 yards, you'll see that we're getting that flatter performance. Okay, fun fact, we gotta digress a tiny bit here. I don't know a single shooter alive that can make 100% of their shots out to 600 yards. If we're talking about, you know, on hunting, in hunting style situations, um, in real conditions where, you know, you're pressed for time in hunting. I don't know any shooter alive that can make 100% of impacts out to 600 yards. I mentioned that on a YouTube uh, live the other day and somebody, I think his name was Michael, said he was a Marine and he's like, I can, I'll take that challenge. Anyway, Michael, email me, uh, info.backfire at gmail.com. Let's talk. So the first is the drops. 
Second reason is drift. Drift is big, especially for, well, for any shooter, but especially for hunters. We're often in situations where you have nasty 15 mile an hour wind and rain, sleet and snow and everything going on. And so any ability to cut through the wind is, is big for me. I think that's why so many animals get gut shot is wind and just it's tough to account for. And so look at the difference at 280 AI and 7 mag, how much better they're cutting the wind. This video is brought to you by Fishing Clash. It's a game that the Backfire audience has really enjoyed in the past. So if you've missed the boat, check it out. So Fishing Clash is a super fun mobile app you can use to get your fishing fix even when you're on the go. Perfect game when you need to, you know, Wind down, decompress, and listen to a book while you reel in some fish. My family downloaded the game and we spent a long time playing together as a family. As we did, you know, you're transported to different beaches around the world and you can experience the thrill of the catch. You press the cast button on the bottom left of the screen. That takes you to the beach or wherever you're going to be fishing. And you can cast for big old fish, some of which I've never seen in real life. The game's fun for a quick on the spot game to download if you're traveling somewhere and it's free to download. So use the link in the description box or scan the QR code that you can see on the screen. Be sure to use my special gift code code backfire to get a special $20 value reward including a unique avatar for free. So get your fish on and download Fishing Clash. The third reason I don't have a 30-06 is kind of one of practicality. It's rare that they're making 30-06 as the first action when they come out with a new model. It's usually 6-5 Creedmoors all the time. Um, certainly if it's a short action, 308s, I get some 300 win mags. But it's rare that a company comes out with a new rifle and, ha and chambers in 30 out 6. It's kind of surprising how that's changed. So I did a little bit of digging and I looked at how popular 30 out 6 is in brand new rifles. Uh, so I actually have an article on Backfire where I have some of this information. And if you look at it, only 3.5% of rifles on the shelf right now are 30 out 6. It's surprising how it has changed. But let's dive into the numbers for the last one. So, uh, by the way, I have uh, I show this Excel sheet that I use in like all my videos has just I've spent the last couple of years compiling all this ballistics data just in all these videos and stuff. I have it wrapped up in one big Excel sheet now, and you can go get it for free. I'm making it available. Um, just go to backfire.tv slash ballistics. That's backfire.tv slash ballistics. Anyway, if you just want this, it's really cool to look and compare all the different cartridges and recoil and all the different things that I've done in there. Um, so go check it out, backfire.tv slash ballistics if you're just kind of a nerd like me and you like looking through these things. This is where we get into the last one. And that is, I, when I ask people about 30-06 today, the thing that I hear most commonly is, ah, it's not very good out at distance. So in these two loads that we're looking at, and these are with you know pretty sleek bullets here, it, it maintains 2,000 feet per second out to 480 or 490 yards. Now again, remember what I said earlier, I don't know a single shooter alive that can make every shot out to 600 yards. And so it's less than half of a percent of shooters that have probably any business shooting out past 480, 490 yards. And even those who have a lot of experience make mistakes out at that range, and I'm, I would be among them, right? I'm, I'm no perfect shooter at all. We just did a video just last week about you know the influencer and the lady and the problem they got on, and man, it was shooting long range that caused that problem, um, among other things, but that was the impetus that really started it all. And so uh, I don't advocate that, but I do, I'm, I am always just interested in what it can do. And I had a situation earlier this year where I shot a deer, I made a mistake, I didn't make a perfect shot on it, and the deer ran out to 590. Now, since I already had a hole in it, I'm obviously gonna shoot, and at 590 yards, I was able to drop that deer right away. And so, uh, I, I still like having that capability. One, just for the range, and I just like versatile guns. All my guns do dual duty hunting and range, right? Um, but also, you know, if you were to face a situation like that where you need to put a second shot in, you're ready.
but let's just look at it. And the reason I use 2,000 feet per second as the max range is a lot of bullets just aren't opening up real well past uh, um, it, when we go slower than that. Um, even there, you're probably only going to get caliber and a half expansion. Just the you know 308 plus half, whatever that math is. That's as as big a, as you're going to be driving that that hole uh, when it's expanded. And so you'll see that compared to a lot of other cartridges, 280i, 7 mag, uh, even the, you know, the lesser known 300 RCM, I put that one on there just because it's very, very similar to a 30-06. And then you know, some of the very modern cartridges, 6.8 Western, 7 PRC, you see they go way the heck out there that you're able to uh, get that max range. But then there's the other one. I think this is the real reason why there hasn't been as much 30-06 in the industry lately. It's because of recoil. Somehow we've gotten enamored with 6.5 Creedmoor, 6.5 PRC. I've seen the limits of what 6.5s can do. They are not my favorite um, hunting uh, caliber. Uh, I've, I've just seen some limits there. I would prefer in general to shoot a little bit heavier caliber and a little bit faster, bring a little bit of steam to the hunt with me. And so, you know, the recoil on a 30-06, well, it's different, you know, if we're talking about grandpa's old gun, some of us remember a 30-06 would kick like nothing else. It hurt when you were shooting a 30-06. You know, you look at uh, old, old rifles. Here, this is not a, a Garand, but this is an old surplus rifle. That was the butt pad. Steel, right? You're taking the steel to the shoulder. Um, and so a lot of people remembered the 30 out sixes, man, that thing kicks. But when you put it into a modern rifle with good stock lines and a really premium recoil pad that I might mention backfires coming out with very, very soon, um, you see it shoots completely different. 30 out six does not have to be a hard kicking rifle and even less so if you know, you're adding a break and, or a suppressor to it. So the problem is the 30-06 is so good at being a generalist that often it's ignored for how, how versatile it can be. You know, 150 to 180 grain bullets is very common. That you'll see you can shoot pretty fast and flat with that 150. With the 80, 180, you're really bringing the steam. Again, it's half of 1% of shooters that has any business shooting past the max range that it can you lose a tiny bit of drop and drift compared to maybe some sevens, but it works so well. It's relatively inexpensive to shoot. I don't know, maybe I made this video in the wrong way. I really wanted to explain the four reasons why I have held back on getting a 30 out six. More I think about it, I might need one. Just thought I'd let you know that I think I'm gonna be going to buy myself a new 30 out six. <laughs> why? So deal? All right. All right, I've been in two places so far. I, I'm surprised how few I'm actually finding. I did see an M1 Garand, a Garand if you want to be real specific. And oh man, those are so cool. I would love to own one, but I do, can't quite justify 1500 bucks on it just yet. So search still continues. All right, finally found what I was looking for. Let's hop back in the house and uh, I'll show you what I got. All right, so here's what I ended up with in the end. I was surprised. I probably went to five different places and I probably only saw 10 30-06s. But in the end, I got the old Savage Axis. Um, I, so I've reviewed Savage Axis rifles, I guess, probably a couple times on the channel in the past. You know, it's they're inexpensive rifles. The real reason I wanted to get one is because the recoil pad, obviously, with what we're working on, we've got to know, you know, we've got to have all the recoil pads for everything. And this one has a very unique line right there. And so it's tough to make a recoil pad. I don't know why they did that. Everybody else does it differently. But this is going to be my new 30-06. I need to take this sucker hunting. Uh, just on a simple hunt somewhere. I think this might be my next one that I take out. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining me in this video. We'll see you in the next one.